Hello, I think we're live now. So uh, this is the second of our events uh, in conjunction with uh, Kuwait, uh, Wajja Art Centre in Kuwait and the British Council in Kuwait. Um, welcome to Highland Print Studio uh, in Inverness, which is in the north of Scotland. Um, this is, I'm John McNaught, I'm the studio manager and Alison here. Alison is the director of the studio. Now, you have the choice uh, down in the bottom of your screen if you would prefer to hear Arabic, which will probably be far more interesting than hearing, or well, certainly hearing me drone on. I can't vouch for Alison. Um, <laughs> this is a webinar, so you'll all be uh, muted and invisible. Uh, so just in case you're sort of trying to work out who else is there, um, just to let you know that. And we'll have a Q&A at some uh, during it, um, and you'll be unmuted to do that. So you use the Q&A itself, or you raise a hand, uh, not not your own hand, but the little hand thing, again, down the bottom of your screen. So I think that's all the housekeeping. Done. Okay. You can speak. Yes. I'm going to say just a little bit about Highland Print Studio and who we are, how we work. We're basically a specialist facility. Um, um, our specialism is printmaking, um, which includes techniques such as etching, woodcut, lino cut, lithography, screen print, photogravure, um, wooden grafing and um, we're an open access studio and what that means is absolutely anyone can learn to use the facility. So we teach people, normally we would teach classes, small classes, but um, because of the current health situation we're teaching one-to-one. -one. So what that teaching enables is absolutely anyone to um, learn to use the space. And the people who use Highland Print Studio range from uh, professional artists like John uh, to complete beginners. Um, and everybody uses the same quality of equipment and materials. We also do education and outreach. So we work with schools and community groups. And we have um, a remit to engage people in the visual arts. So to ensure that anyone in the visual art, anyone who's interested in visual art knows that they can take part in it and it's uh, for them. And we encourage people to be creative. So we're going to show you a little video um, a virtual tour of Highland Print Studio, which will teach you a little bit more about some of the techniques we use. If what Alison's already said. <laughs> but nobody dies. <laughs> well, yeah, have you seen that? <laughs> so I'm going to uh, try and share screen now. This this little video is about 20 minutes long. It's a uh, like Alison says, a, a guided tour of what we do and of the building. Um, we can take some questions after it, and then I'm going to do a demo print uh, after that. So I know this has been advertised for two hours long. It might not go that length, so um, it depends on the amount of questions. Yeah, it's likely to be about 19 minutes, minutes like that, I think. max. So I'm going to screen share now, and we'll get the little video going. So this is our Loom Print Studio and we're going to give you a tour. This is Scotland, the most interesting and clever part of the UK. The arrow points to Inverness, capital of the Highlands in the north of Scotland, where Highland Print Studio is situated on the banks of the river that flows from Loch Ness to the sea every day. Printmaking involves 
involves artists making use of print techniques to produce low volume multiples of editions. Generally the prints are hand done using high uh, quality materials like cotton papers and high quality inks and generally very tactile uh, materials placed to work with. The studio offers the four main printing techniques, printmaking techniques, which are relief printmaking, so that's lino cut, wood cut, wood engraving, etching or intaglio, screen print, and lithography. And like I mentioned, we also have a digital area which can, we can work with photographers or produce uh, materials for the other techniques in the studio. So this, what you're, the space we're in just now is the ground floor and in this space we have, uh, we do the printing for the techniques in relief, intaglio and lithography, all of which use oil-based inks in our studio. This is the relief printing area of the studio. We've got three, uh, maybe four presses that deal with different things. Techniques, um, if we start with lino cut, basically they're all pretty similar. The relief means it's from relievio to raise, so you have the raised surface takes the ink, so it's generally applied with a, a roller like this, or, uh, which, so the ink is applied, rolled, and then rolled over the surface of the block. Lino cut from linoleum, if we look at black and whites first, um, the tools for these. Uh, a mixture of V and U gouges, which are held in the hand in this action. If you can see the blocks close up, the, the text, for instance, or anything, but in particular text, which is important, has to be done in reverse because you have a direct print, which means the block goes straight onto the paper with the ink, and when it's peeled off, it's in reverse or back to front. Now, the other technique is slightly different. Uh, again, same principle, and that's wood engraving, and Alison's got an example here, which I'll show you. Okay. So, this technique is, um, in principle, the, the same as the other techniques, in that you're cutting everything away that you want to remain white and you're inking up the surface of the block. The difference with this technique is really how the tree has been cut to get the block. So if the tree is cut across the grain, so that would be across the trunk, and it means that you can get incredible thing detail with this block. So um, if I show you some tools here, you can see that they're, they're basically chisels, not, not so much gouges like the other ones, they're very sharp chisels. You could do a fair amount of damage with these. Um, and to cut the block, you have to use a magnifying glass. So you tell magnifying glass like this, you get your chisel and you hold on a similar way and you cut into the block. So you can see hopefully in this print, the level of detail that you can get. So this technique is the opposite of all of the techniques we've just shown you, where the ink was sitting on the surface. With this technique, the, the image is etched into a plate, so the ink is actually, the, the, the plate holds the ink. So um, you can use either steel, or copper, and you will start with a flat piece of the metal. This example is copper, and we coat this with a wax ground, so you can see this here. So this is this ground is melted onto the plate, and then rolled out to create a thin film that um, protects the plate. And then we use a tool just like this, and um, push the etching point, and you're drawn into the wax. Put it in a bath of acid, 
and the acid eats into the exposed areas of the steel. And to take a print from the plate, you would coat the entire surface with ink. So the ink stays in lines, is white off the surface, and it then gets put on the press for printing. With this technique, you soak the paper first, and that softens the, the fibres, and you blot it and put it on top of the plate. And when you put it through the press, because the paper's soft, it forces it into the furrows and you peel it off to get the print. There's a couple of examples here that show the different types of materials that we use. This is a um, copper plate and um, this one by an artist who uses the studio, Copan Latate, um, so steel plate. Another entirely linked technique is uh, polymer photogravure that we do in the studio, which is done on these plates, uh, which are a steel back with a light sensitive polymer coating on the, the face of them. So the way this starts, is, it's, this is a great technique for photographers. Um, and you can see here we have a, a positive of a photograph that's been taken through Photoshop or a digital development program and printed in a digital suite onto this film. That's then exposed onto these plates in the photo exposure unit. And what's remarkable about the polymer plates is they develop in water. So there's no chemicals involved in it really. So once these are inked in exactly the same way as the steel and copper plates, um, they go through the press in exactly the same way with these lovely soft blankets on to help give you know, a lot of pressure. And you get this amazing, like, kind of lovely, rich, soulful images. So we'll go upstairs to the Nesney. Right, so this is the room where a lot of the preparation work takes place for prints. It's where we draw up plates and we have this hot plate here which is for putting the wax ground onto etching plates and also for lino cutting. We heat the lino on here and it just makes it softer and smoother to cut. Um, you can see we've got lito stones and we'll tell you about that technique in just a second, that stone lithography. We have um, boxes where studio users can store some of their work. We have um, these magnifying glasses, which are for wooden graving. And this box here is called an aquatint box. Now, aquatint is a process in etching um, mentioned downstairs that it enables you to put tone onto the etching plate. So to etch the plate, you come into this room, just here. And gloves on before I touch this. Uh, these two baths are where we do we etch the plates. So this one we etch um, steel and nitric acid. So you can see the bath there. This bath here is a dip tank and we use this for etching copper. So the chemical, as I said, was called ferric chloride and this gets lifted out. The plate is put in there and it goes back in. So this technique is called stone lithography. You can see why. And the principle of lithography is that grease and water don't mix. It's that simple. So um, I wish the technique was that simple, but the principle is. So when you're drawing onto the stone, you're drawing using greasy materials, for example, these cranes. Once you've got your drawing, you then etch the stone with, uh, it's with drops of nitric acid and 
Gilmar Bay. That one's uh, in the process of being drawn up. This one here has been processed. And when you're doing the print, you dampen the surface of the stone. So in principle, when you ink it up, the grease from the roller should just go on these greasy marks that you can see on the stone. So the, the press that you saw downstairs, it's the etching press, the motorised one. The head comes off it and a different head goes on it to allow it to operate for stone life. The beautiful thing about this technique is that uh, these marks that you can see here and um, here, you can only get them through this technique. Um, so that's what makes it so special. And there's something amazing about drawing on a stone and getting a print off it that you can then sell to people. It's lovely. This thing here, which is called oh, a levitator, um, it's a heavy metal weight. The stone goes onto the sink. It's water is put on top of it, grit, and then this metal uh, disc here is moved over the surface of the stone, and that skins the stone. It's worth it because the surface that you get once you've finished that process is like satin, and it's just the most beautiful surface to draw on. So now what we're going to do is head another floor up to the screen room. So screen printing uh, is a slightly different technique from the ones downstairs. Uh, there's a couple of Maybe big differences. One is that the inks that we use in the studio for screen printing are acrylic. Uh, everything else downstairs is oil-based, so up here it's water-based. The other big difference is that unlike the techniques, uh, the other te the other printmaking techniques, there is no reversal in screen. So um, some people find it easier to learn because they're not having to think about things being back to front when you're working on them. Most of the screen prints we do in here are photo exposed, so they'll start off, the artwork starts off with things like this, which are known as transparencies. And the screens are a fine mesh, almost like a net curtain, very fine. The screens are coated with an emulsion which blocks all the holes, and that emulsion is sensitive to light, so it hardens with light. Now, if it's exposed with a stencil like this sitting against it, the areas behind the stencil are protected from the light, therefore they wash out the water, and it should leave, you can hopefully see on this screen, a stencil in the shape of the drawing, ready for printing. And this is a big photo exposure unit, so the screen fits inside it with the transparencies. It's blasted with light for so many light units and then it's taken to the washer and washed and then you end up with a stencil on the screen. So once our screen is ready, it's clamped into this vacuum screen table for printing on paper. The ink would be poured out here and then with the squeegee, I push down at an angle so I'm getting the blade of the rubber and I pull towards me and that pushes the ink through and onto the paper. That noise of the squeegee travelling, one of the distinctive sounds of screen printing. So this is one of the, the nicest spaces in the studio. Um, it's certainly got one of the nicest windows, probably the best window in Inverness. Um, it's, we've tried to make it as flexible a space as possible. We can seat about 25 people here and we have artist talks with projections onto this wall on, the, on this side of the room. The room can be blacked out with shutters. Uh, it it's, it's, can also be very bright, the windows open up in the summer on the few warm days we have. It feels like printing outside, so it's a really nice space, nice enough that we once had a wedding in it as well. 
So we've got one more floor up there. That's the digital area. So we'll head up there, let you see what's in there. So this is a uh, this is a digital area, digital suite. Um, so you can see this is a, a totally different feel to much of the rest of the studio. Um, we have a half a dozen or so desktops, um, two very large printers, and a high quality scanner. So the purpose of this room. Uh, it would actually be pretty hard for us to operate without it. Um, we've got, on all of the machines, the main programs used would be Photoshop and Lightroom. Um, so studio users can come up here, files can be either resized on a basic level and printed out on plain paper if you wanted, say, a sketchbook sketch enlarged for putting on to, say, a lino cut, something like that. Or um, another big use of it in conjunction with the rest of the studio is positives or separations, as we call them, like this one, which um, are printed on this printer. This is our, was our original printer. It's now dedicated to printing positives. Up at this end, the newer printer, <clears throat> these are, they're both the same size. They're both 44-inch uh, wide printers. They're about 110 centimeters, 1.1 meters. This one is more for, we do a lot of work with photographers. So it prints to uh, very, uh, like an archival quality, also a gallery standard. And over here you see a flatbed scanner. So people can come and archive older work, digitize it to give it a longer life, or simply come in with uh, some slides, scan them, take them through Photoshop, Lightroom, etc., and then print them on the large format printer, which does a beautiful job of them. Doesn't lose the film feel, but gives them a whole new archival life. So that was Highland Print Studio, so if you find yourself in a mess, come see us. So hopefully that uh, gives a little intro into what we do at the studio. I think it'll only be a matter of time before alison has got an Oscar in the front window. Uh -huh. Not fine. I'll screen share again uh, because what would be nice would be just some of these techniques that you saw, we can just relate them back to the exhibition. So on the ground floor, if you remember, we started off with relief. And in the exhibition, uh, two examples would be from Adi Adesinia. This one, Honey, quite a large print, black and white, seven, eight centimetres. Um, Adi, as I said, if you watch the first one, is from Nigeria, but been in the UK and particularly Scotland for a long time. So he works on this. This is actually not that big for Adi. He goes quite a bit bigger uses a mix of traditional cutting tools and dremels, drills, etching tools to spike and make loads of texture on the lino. And this is one of mine, um, I don't know, welcome to Scotland series, so just highlighting the life expectancy in the Carlton area of Glasgow, um, being a tidy saving for the state pension because men there only live to just under 54 years. This is a three color lino cut. I'll be doing a two color one in a minute. So this one you can see there's the kind of uh, yellow, then the reddish brown, and then the dark brown on top. On etching, so, mm -hmm. so um, we just thought I'd show you a couple of examples of each of the techniques 
um, we can do here at the studio. These um, are, this one is by Bronwyn Slay, who is an artist based in Glasgow. She uses Glasgow Print Studio and um, she teaches for us here. So it's a two play etching, which was probably done on steel. And this one was uh, printed here at Highland Print Studio by uh, another Glasgow based artist, Murray Robertson. Um, we commissioned Murray along with uh, six other artists to work on a project, um, environmental themed project called Sexy Pete, that's P-E-A-T. So um, the project highlighted the global importance of peatland as a carbon sink. So it helps to regulate um, the global temperature by trapping more carbon than the tropical rainforests. The name came from the fact that a lot of celebrities, I think the singer Sting was one of the first who highlighted the importance of the rainforest. So in a way, um, Sting made the rainforest sexy, but unfortunately no one has made Pete sexy. So we tried to um, give her a, a heads up. And this technique is polymer photography, also known as photo etching. So one of the examples from the exhibition is um, by artist Joanne B. Carr, who lives up the very north of Scotland. And we worked with Joanne on another project with a print studios from Scandinavia. Uh, this is a polymer photograph here, so done on the photo etching plate. But the print also has a screen printed glaze over it, which gives it this slightly creamy colour. And Joanne has also watercolored um, parts of the pattern on the jumper. The other photograph here is by Ariel photographer Kasper Kowalski, who again we worked on, on Sexy Pete. And he, Kasper did a series of aerial photographs of the blanket ball in Scotland. And the amazing thing about when, when you're actually standing in the blanket ball, you just see a huge environment of brown, when you look at it in detail, it actually has amazing colours because it's full of tiny flowers and, and lots of insects. And when you look at it from Casper's point of view, you see the importance of water to that environment. All of these channels are all formed by water. The big black area in the centre is um, a, a log or a lake, um, they're called lochs in Scotland. Um, so you can see that the, the environment is shaped by water. So the other technique we showed you is lithography and um, this uh, stone lithograph. It's uh, two, two stones. So the, the pale area, the green, with the grey feet in the sky was printed off one stone and the black black area was printed a, off a second stone. And again, you can see these unique marks um, that just a stone lithography gives you. It, it makes marks that look like stone. So there's a synergy which is lovely. And screen, do you want to talk about screen? Yeah, um, this is Roz Lind or Roz Lawless, uh, who uh, is based in Glasgow and does some teaching with us. She teaches screen print with us. Um, so Roz has used screen print with mixed media. So she's printed, probably printed the screen print colours and then maybe added other, other 
materials on top, so it may well be uh, that she's added pastel with various things onto it. Her work tends to be kind of abstractions, I think, of, of kind of um, urban scenes in Glasgow. And then Rachel Duckhouse, uh, again, based in Glasgow. Um, Rachel's a kind of amazing drafts person, if that's a, if that's a word, uh, terrific at drawing these. This is from um, work she did in Banff in Canada. Uh, she got a residency there. I'm sure she was delighted that it wasn't Banff in, uh, in Aberdeenshire. Um, but she worked with the sewage and flood prevention department and started to uh, try to draw the way that water flowed. And um, I think it was so successful at that that the engineer started to uh, look at her drawings uh, alongside their computer modelling. So you can see this has got a blend on it. A blend uh, is printed across the screen. You can see that it goes from blue at the top through green into yellow at the bottom. So if you remember in the video seeing the squeegee, the squeegee would have the blue ink at one side of it, the yellow at the other. And the more you print it, it gradually blends together in this very smooth way. So that looks like that would be an underlay. And then she's got uh, the thin lines and then the orange lines printed separately on top. So, so that's it. Those were images from our exhibition from Alba to Arabia, which um, was uh, funded by the British Council. So the exhibition went to three venues in uh, the Gulf region. It, went to, it started in Oman, then went to Dubai, then Jeddah, and was just about to go to Kuwait when the pandemic struck. So we are now, um, we've made a digital version of the project, which includes the online exhibition, which the full exhibition can be seen on our website. So this, these are my cutting tools. So if I show you these close up, um, they are like V gouges, which is this one. So if you look at it straight on, it's like the letter V. So it cuts through the liner like a plough in a field. Or the other type are U gouges, which like the letter U. So they're probably, you know, if you wanted a basic row, lines clearing, but they can be used for other things as well. And this wee thing, this trick we found here is called a slip scrop. And for this, I used to sharpen or hone, really is a better way of doing it, the blades as I work. So you might see me now again pulling over this with this polishing company and keeps it nice and sharp. So they're held in the tool in the hand, sorry, the tool's held in the hand like so. So they're quite nice. And this, these are called mushroom handles because they look like mushrooms. Uh, they go in the, suppose the heel of your hand and that's what you push with. So this is going to be two colours. So from the one block, so we're clearing everything I'm cutting. It's going to be inked with a roller. So everything that I'm cutting here is going to be white because the roller goes over the surface with the ink and it won't be able to get in to the grooves that I'm cutting. So hence the relief from Relievio. To raise. So it's the raised surface, not the indent that takes the ink. Now, if any of you've got any questions at the moment, feel free to ask them. And maybe Paul whose voice you heard there can let you become so that we can hear you and questions can be asked as I'm going along. So at the moment, what I'm doing is just establishing an outline <clears throat> and the main lines in the print. 
So I've done that all with one tool. Now, if I carried on with the one tool, it's going to kind of show because the, the, the print will start to look like everything has been done with the one tool. So I'm going to shift now to a slightly smaller tool. We'll just give it a pull through. This is something that you keep doing. Honing uh, is not sharpening. Sharp, you sharpen the blade, the honing effectively polishes it and keeps it sharp, so it maintains the sharpness of the blade. So I'm going to go in now and do some of the lettering. And again, what I'm doing is thinking about which bits I want to remain, or be white rather, or the lightest areas. So in a two color print like this, we have a light, which will be the paper, or it could be a white if, it's, if we're using white paper. Then we have uh, um, a mid tone that will be the first colour, and then a dark, which will be the second colour. So it's really a tonal thing. And uh, if we change the colours, then hopefully the print would still read in the same way because you'd have that mid, a light, a mid, and a dark. So, although I'm cutting out these letters, I'm leaving some stuff back for cutting in the next colour. Clear a wee bit. This is a U gouge I've gone on to now. So up until now I've been using V's. We'll clear a little bit out there. Maybe clear this area here. We've uh, played about with the letters a little bit. So we've got this A sticking up on top of the L. Your your mind really kind of remembers shapes of letters. So you, you're able to mess about with them a little bit and people can still, your brain still reads the information. So this is the N and the D. And what I said, the U gouge was for clearing, but I think we effectively cut a wide line with one of the breaker. Okay. We'll do a little bit more. And we'll leave the middle word just now. Leave it for later. I recently put a print onto um, Instagram that I misspelled a word in. And uh, it was interesting the delight people took in telling me that I'd not spell something correct. So if that happens, you can straight in with a question or a comment. So this is studio. And Fancy O at the end here. Let's 
So I'm not, I'm holding back a little bit so that we're, um, we're going to have some stuff to cut on the second colour. So this technique, there's two ways um, to print. You're printing in colour. You could have like a bit like screen wood. Uh, you could screen the colours are separated out so they're known as separations. Um, whereas in relief, you could do something similar, which would um, involve a separate block. So we'd have this block and then another one for each colour. But this technique that I'm doing just now is known as um, reduction cutting or sometimes suicide cutting uh, because there is no way back once we've cleared the colour, as you'll see once we progress. So I'm just, this is called stippling now, where you're sort of almost spiking or jabbing the tool in and creating little dots on the handle of the roller. And I'm going to clear a little bit out on the handle of the roller as well. fairly quick. So I've made a little mistake that I've lost a little bit, but hopefully it won't um, matter too much. And we'll get a little bit of highlight now, just on the top of the roll. So this is with a fine tool, and I'm coming along and just get a bit of visual highlight. They'll make it look a little bit 3D and uh, help, again, just help get the print reading well. That's the, the main thing. And we'll just feather this out now so it gets a bit smaller because we can always add to it for the next colour. Okay. Now you can see I've put the stippling down this side of the roller, so that suggests the light is coming from this side to hit it. So what it might do is make the outline. I'm going to go for my larger U gouge and make the outline on this side a little bit bigger and fatter. So it's light against dark and dark against light. Just to give a wee bit of added texture and let you see how other things can be used. I'm looking for my knife in my pocket, which I can't find. I did have it earlier on, I've got it. So I'm just going to use this as a just a normal cutting knife, a box cutting knife, and I'm just going to use it by dragging it sideways with a point, which almost makes like it's like an unpleasant scratching sound, really, because you've got to do it. Reasonably hard, you know, if you're a weak, sensitive person and you do that, that's not going to show. You've got to be able to hear, feel it with your fingernails, otherwise it would just flood with ink. So, you're really sore and it feels, like I say, it feels a little bit unpleasant at first. I like to think of somebody like Seb Cole when I'm doing this. Okay, so... First colour cut, we'll give it a go for now for inking. So this is now where we're going to get the ink onto the block. So if we move along, we're on the glass slab now. We use glass because it's nice, easy, clean. These are oil-based inks. They're not at all like ink from a pen. You can see they're quite stiff. Um, this one's been ready mixed up to an orange. Um, I might. I might use two here, a little bit sneaky, um, to get two colours on the one. So what I might do is I use um, I'm going to use both two rollers. 
So I'm going to just do this middle roller here with the orange on it. So you can see if I get a little bit on the palette knife, pull it out. The rollers themselves are they're quite weighty. They're a, a rubber, very high quality rubber roller, which again makes a big difference to the way the print will look. If you use a cheap roller, they need a lot of ink to get them rolling. And therefore, once you've got a lot of ink, it starts to flood cuts. So what I'm wanting here is not a great deal of ink. I'm going to almost under ink with this. So let's get this one set up and then I'll go on to set up the second roller before we ink. Second one we'll use the blue. This is a kind of blue gray, slightly darker. Or a, and a slightly smaller roller. Roll, it's taking a bit longer to roll this thing, it's a little bit stiffer. And there's a little bit of chalk on the roller. We put chalk on the rollers to prevent them from sticking to things when they're being stored. These rollers are not cheap, um, but they do if they're after last a very long time. So using um, looking after them well. So here at the studio, the way the, the studio works, you have, you pay, once you know what you're doing, or if you do know what you're doing, you come along and you pay a subscription that with an annual membership, and that allows you then to make use of the facility and access to all of this equipment. So. We'll go back to this and then we're going to start inking. So, like I say, this is under inking. You can hear the difference in sound. I don't know if you can hear it through the mic. This is really what we should be looking for it's a light texture and that hiss. That's good. This is under ink, so you can't really hear the hiss. But I'm just wanting it to almost be like a sort of rough background. Yeah, I'm not going to do too much with it. And it's hard to judge just how much of that will come through, but we'll print two of these, which mainly that's because in case I can't turn the screen off. Um, I've got another one to play with. So now I'm using the blue, blue gray, and we're coming along lettering. And it doesn't matter too much. So you can see I've come over a little bit there, but that's okay. Depends on the type of image you're trying to do. You might get a little bit here going on to the, the background, but that'll just kind of add to the movement of the print. Okay. And then we'll carefully get a little bit on the handle with the roller as well. The thing is, the white outline around it is going to be strong enough that any ink coming off the edge is going to be okay. It's not going to be that. It's not going to worry the, the way the print reads too much. Okay, so hopefully you can see the print ready to go. And we'll give it a, a blow through the press now. So we'll move on to the press. And I'll explain. This, you can see we've got registration blocks here, and I'll, I'll explain these ones in a minute. These are for the block, and this is for the paper. So this is to hold it. Registration means that it hits the paper in exactly the same time, in exactly the same place each time. So what I've done is, I kind of like to see I'm bringing it in, and it butts in against these cardboard mounts, and that's it in position. To be as careful as possible, I'm just going to get the paper in, which is uh, this is the paper that we've sent out to wager, so it'll be used in the classes. Now, this, these are uh, registration maps by a company called Terms Button, I think, in, uh, from the US. So it's a, got a nice system to use. You can see there's plastic tabs. And these metal pins. So the tabs are on every bit of paper. Paper goes in, locates in the tabs, and it drops into position. 
And then you can see this arrow here is always pointing at the cylinder because that's all it should, it should always go through the same direction. And then this is a packing pad, just a made up of newsprint. That sits on top, so it just spreads the pressure and gives a nice evenness. I'm going to switch this one on, this is great, um, because I don't have to wind this one through, it's got a motor. And So let's squeeze around here. We'll just lift the packing pad off. With the Japanese paper being so fine, it's, you know, if you think on your, your letter writing paper, about 100 grams, it's probably down about 30, 25 to 30. And we lift off and we have the print. So you can see. The, I've got two colours going here, but effectively one, because it's by one colour, I mean it's gone through the press ones, but we've inked the same areas. So it might mess up the rollers a little bit for the second run, but we're only doing two, so we we'll play about a wee bit. So we'll put this in the drying rack. The oil based inks can take uh, overnight, 24 hours to dry. We don't need to clean the block just now. Um, we just re ink on top. So now it's got, it's not a virgin block anymore, it's got skin of ink on it. So it's a little bit easier to ink. So we'll just go back, repeat the process with a slight under inking for the orange. We want too much. And then we'll go in. I'm not, this isn't a big block, not a lot of surface area. If there was, I would use a lot more ink. It's all fairly logical. And so I would maybe put a little bit, smear more ink out on the slab, but I don't think we're going to even need it at the moment. We've still got a nice test going on here. We get to the stage where you can even it upstairs and I can hear the hiss. You end up sharing with people that's too much ass, maybe too much ink. So the ears get tuned in to that for a while. Okay, paint again. Over to the press. And this time the arrow should be pointing the cylinder. So we just simply turn this registration sheet, it's got the registration sheet around. Again, we have to be as careful as we can. You tend to find these things are quite easy to understand, but you can be a bit careless and then you end up with a misregistered print. Maybe I'll be able to demo that if I don't get this right. So again, in with the tabs, got the paper. I can kind of turn this a little bit because of the point. So it's not easy to see. I can add on, slide it a little bit, and now press takes it through the other way. This is probably better than the bake off. I think it should be the British print off. It's not much better. Today. Relief doesn't, in the, in, the, in the e film you saw etching, etching uses um, that's the one with the blankets in the press, uses uh, a lot more pressure. They're probably they're talking less than a ton of pressure here, it's still quite a lot, you know, you wouldn't want it on your toe. Um, so there we are. So hopefully we've got two that are pretty much identical, and now we're ready to go with the second colour. So so before I cut again, I'm just going to put gloves on and then use a uh, uh, spirit to clean the previous ink off the block. Just 
sure I'm just going to reach for a rag. And look, and this just quickly cleans. So that I can cut again. You wouldn't normally work quite as fast as this. You need a little bit of time to let things dry out and so on. Ideally, you'd let the paper, the, the ink on the paper dry overnight before applying the session again. Crazy so, so if you imagine that we printed this, if we inked this say in a black and we printed it over the top and it was registered. Everything that is white, the black still can't get into. So the black would be on the surface and it would really completely cover everything we've already printed. So the, 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 the blue gray and the orange would disappear under the black unless I cut away more. So what I'm doing now, when I'm cutting the text, I'll be cutting away everything I want to stay that color. If I cut away here, it would be the orange. But most of the cutting is in this area, I won't be cutting anything in the orange. So really what I'm thinking about is the bits that I want to stay blue-grey or the mid-tone. Okay, so we're back on the hot plate. And we'll get into the new edge. And we can now cut away some bits, if you remember. We used to get a little bit of heat back into the, the line. I'll just turn this up a little bit too silly there. Um, I say, if anybody's got any questions they want to ask, just do it at the moment. Paul can let us know, and Alison can pick it up. Read yep. them out. John, we do have a question. Yeah, from, okay. Uh, from Antonio. Uh, and they're asking, how many pounds of pressure does the press apply to make the print? A relief, I think, uh, I think it's trying to be 800 kilos, roughly, you know, and uh, so I don't know what that is in pounds. What would that be? times 2.24 to multiply that up. Um, it's not as high. I mean, etching tends to be higher. And for when we work in wage, I will be hand printing with a, a wee device, a Japanese device called a baron. So you can, you know, it's like a concentrate that burnishes it on. You don't get as consistent a print as you would from a press like this, but um, it still gives, it's, again, it's not whether it's right or wrong, it's, it's giving a, a different look to the print and it can be very satisfying. Um, so that, I mean, a press like the Takach, which is the one I was printing on there, we bought it, um, I don't know, it'll be going on for 15 years or something, or 12, 13 years ago, uh, got it shipped from Albuquerque. Um, and, I think, I don't know, at the end it was, it was about $13,000, $40,000 or something. So they're not the sort of things that everyone could have. Um, but a baron is more affordable. Um, so you can still print without a press as well. But certainly in terms of kilos, it's about 800. So like I say, Kind of like, you know, I always say it'd like, be like crying sore if you put your hand through it. Now I'm starting on the word print, which we just left. So this will be entirely on a background of the, the blue. So because we didn't do any cutting on the word print. So it'll look a little bit darker than the other two. The other two will have light bits in them, but the word print will be entirely on a darker background. So this is the R. So remember, it's a lowercase R. So I'm just playing about with fonts and so on as well. So we're going and uh, I'll just clear out the bits that we're not wanting to print. So this is why, if I did now, if I want to go back and print the blue. I can't get it, it's gone in these areas. It's no longer on the block. So that's why uh, 
you know, like I said, it's, it's known as reduction cutting, but also sometimes known as suicide cutting because there is no way back. So I suppose a, a rule with it would be, or well not a rule, but advice would be if you're in doubt, leave it in place uh, because you can always print one, clean the block and cut more away. Whereas my experience is, despite what all the books say, you can't glue lino back in, certainly not if you're using a press, it will just hang out again after a while. So now again on the word studio, we've got some of the lettering has been cut and I'm just taking out I suppose some, some areas of it that are there, which again will help it obviously make it clearer to read, uh, but give us quite a nice um, look to the print as well, I suppose. So we're getting that. And the S, of course. So. Easy as that. So now on the roller, um, we will let's see. We'll just cut away a little bit more here on the handle. Just to clear a wee bit. Again, with with good tools. Uh, like these, I mean, we've got you can. There's tools here for people to use in the studio. Um, I tend to like it's. It's kind of like you know, good shoes. They tend to sort of fit your hand after a while, and you, you know, if you ever uh, put on someone else's shoes, even if it's the same size, they don't seem to fit you so well because the shape of their foot is different. And it's kind of same with tools. I, I prefer to use my own. I feel a lot more confident with them just because you're. You're so used to them, so that's why I'm using my own ones here. But there are very similar tools available in the studio for people to, to use. But most people, if they are really getting into it, want to sort of buy their own. So what we're doing here is, remember I did that sort of light along the top of the roller, and I'm just increasing this. So remember, every line I'm cutting now will be blue, not white, blue, blue. So it's like a kind of second layer of it. So hopefully what we should get is the white outline and then slightly deeper with the blue. We can take it further along this time. The same with the stippling, we'll do a little bit more, which will give us hopefully a wee bit more uh, of a 3D feel. Okay, we'll print it. Of the white and then the blue stipple marks as well. So it's just again by stippling and giving these lines here, we're just as well as you know, it doesn't mean this might make it look like a cork handle in the roller or something, but it's it's more about just having different textures in different places. It's a bit like when I said earlier on, um, if you use the same tool, it's really going to look like it's been cut with the same tool. Uh, and it's just different textures make it more interesting, more lively. So now I'll take the outline on this side a little bit bigger now as well. Even though, because remember this outline will be blue, not um, white, so that one is what the lines are. The other thing I never mentioned is safety. You know, you can see my hands are always roughly in this position. You tend to, to hold it like this and you can see it slips and it goes right in and it goes right in to the bone. So again, another thing that would be crying sore. It's the sort of thing you do once and then you learn from it. So we'll add a little bit more scratching down here so this will catch a little bit more. Well, because I might not ink that out here anyway, but at least it was just Thank you. 
So. Okay, so, so are we done? Are we dead there? And we're good to go. So, um, I had that third roller out. Well, maybe I'll maybe use this because there's not a lot of ink on it. Normally, you clean it, but I'll just run the ink off it on the, on the slab. We've got a dab here, which is, I think, virtually unblacked. But I might add, it's quite nice to relate the colours. So, you might, instead of just using the black, we'll get a little bit of the we got a wee bit of the orange in, these are opposites, so that should mix towards a grey, and then we'll put a little bit of black in it as well, just to darker, so I think it's all got a nice kind of orange. And as long as it's a darker colour, we'll line up a black for us. So a little bit of time. Mixing the darker colour into the light. You can see how I'm mixing it, I'm just mixing, pushing the ink underneath the palette knife, squeezing it between the palette knife and the glass. Okay, so. Including it's on the roller, we'll not have too much. It's for this as well, so you'll hear the hiss better than this is the larger roller. So, rolling it and lifting it, spinning it, and it rolls it into this nice square of ink. So, Again, I didn't cut away the background, but we just won't ink it. So again, we'll get, we'll maybe get some ink coming over. We'll not worry too much about that. But we will ink this corner down here when we die. Okay, Okay, on to the press. So, how's it going to go now? The tunnel, so the arrow, point in again. And it goes into its button in careful. So, you tend to, people tend to be more careful with the second colour and then discover the first one's out. So, you've got to be on it the whole time. Um, so we get the first one. Oh. And then drop it down. Packing pad on. Slide it in. Form it truth. There it goes. Carefully feel, feel the packing pad back and then pull slowly and this is the finished print. So maybe the best thing is if I compare it to the one that doesn't have the one, you can see you've got the block here. 
So you can see that what I was cutting away, if you look at the word print, for instance, mm -hmm. it was all blue. Whereas here we've cut away the blue and the black is printed over. So we get the black with print. And the same with that, the blend along the top, we started off with a white. So the, the, not the blend, but the, the, the kind of highlight marks on the roller, start with the white. And then we cut slightly longer on the blue. So there you get the blue going into the white, which gives a kind of, as if it's three dimensional and creates that kind of optical illusion of it being round. And then we've got the ink down in this bit as well. We didn't have enough first to look at texture and so on, just lines it all up. So, here we go. That's two color with a sneaky third in there. Reduction cut, minor cut. And that's what we'll be doing in the second class of wager. The first class is black and white. Second class, we get two colors like this. So it'll be easy on you to begin with. So hopefully that's kind of um, useful to see. Okay, so hopefully you can see us back at the main computer. And uh, we don't have any sound issues. I don't know if there's any questions or not before we finish up. We have the first black and white line of cut classes on I think Monday. It's a three hour class and that will be, people will go to Wager. They, they, we've sent kits of equipment out to Kuwait to Wager and uh, I'll be on Zoom and teach it remotely, but you'll have the same kit of equipment as I'll have back here in Scotland. Uh, so that's Monday and then we have Next Wednesday, we've got another open event where we'll show the two films I mentioned earlier uh, with um, screen print and etching. Kind of going into more detail, so both films about 20 minutes long and just a discussion after that. And then the following week, uh, we've got the two-colour class, which is over three days, three two-hour sessions. Um, which, uh, and that'll give us the something similar to what we've just done here. Thank you. So, so um, if we don't, if, if um, no one ha has any questions, we'll just um, end the meeting there. We hope you enjoyed it and found it informative. And we'd like to thank the British Council for funding the opportunity. Our website is Highlandprintstudio.co.uk, and you can find more information about us there. And see the exhibition. And so see the exhibition. Is on that. So, yeah. And hopefully, this has been recorded. Um, so, hopefully, we'll be able to present that in some way as well, along with the other events we're doing. Thank you, and good evening. Cheerio.